Hello. Okay, so I need to go over the books that I've read in between my last wrap up and holiday booktubeathon. So this is, I guess, my final just wrap up video of 2016. The very final books I read will be in holiday booktubeathon. I have eight books to talk about, so let's do this as quickly as I can. The first two books are the final two books in the Search trilogy. This is, again, the Avatar The Last Airbender graphic novel series that I've been reading, and I finished the Search trilogy, which I really enjoyed. This was learning the backstory of Zuko's mom, which was just amazing, and I loved so much about this. It made me really emotional with my favorite character, which is Zuko, and it was just really good. I did feel like the middle one was a little draggy. It suffered from middle book syndrome, and it just didn't really further the plot. It kind of just set up the last book, so I gave that one three and a half stars, and then I gave the third installment four stars. Next, I'm going to talk about Talking As Fast As I Can by Lauren Graham. This is her nonfiction book that she just released, uh, kind of alongside the Gilmore Girls reboot, which just happened. I'm a huge Gilmore Girls fan. I really like Lauren Graham. So I had, I guess, really high expectations for this book. And I'm not going to lie, it kind of let me down. She didn't get as personal as I wanted her to get. I really like it when celebrity memoirs, and obviously just memoirs in general, have vulnerability to them and talk about raw, honest, deep moments in their lives, and I did not get that. She really just made this a comedy book, and I felt like there were so many filler chapters that were just her trying to be funny. I wanted serious moments alongside the funny bits. We didn't get that. It seems like the book was really supposed to be kind of centered around Gilmore Girls and I loved everything that we got, but again, I felt like it was scratching the surface and I wanted to go deeper and I wanted more things from her than she gave me. Some of the chapters I just felt were unnecessary. There's a whole chapter about dieting in Hollywood. It wasn't funny. There was a whole chapter about her hosting Project Runway, like it was one day out of her life where she was a guest judge on a reality TV show. I did not understand why that was a monumental moment of her life that she needed to share. I didn't like the chapter about technology when adults are like, Ugh, kids these days are addicted to their phones and why don't they have a real conversation? I just don't like that argument. So yeah, now that I'm like discussing it, I'm pointing out all these negative things about this book that I didn't like. Overall, it was okay. Like, I enjoyed most of it. The things that we got were mostly fine. I initially gave this a week three stars. After talking about it, I feel like this is more of a two and a half star read just because the things that stand out to me are negatives. Next, I read, I read a graphic novel. This is King this is by Joshua Hill Fialkoff, and then the artist is Bernard Chang. This is a post-apocalyptic graphic novel about this guy King who is working for this government agency and basically everyone on Earth is some sort of mutant creature. I wasn't a huge fan of this. I just felt like it was a very simple story. We didn't get very much backstory with any character. We didn't get very much world building. The plot was very basic. I felt like it wasn't very well written. Like the dialogue itself just wasn't funny. Probably my favorite part about this was the art, which was really colorful and vibrant. It just felt very polished. It did a good job picking color palettes for each spread, but overall this just wasn't very impressive as a graphic novel. I gave this two out of five stars. Next, I read this book, which I guess is maybe not a book because it is only released as an audiobook, as far as I know, but it is Kwanzaa Folk Tales. This is just a really short audio collection of Kwanzaa Folk Tales, and it's all read by famous black celebrities. The first one is narrated by Raven Simone. They made this in like the 90s, so she's a small child and it's really adorable. I wanted to read it because I was in the holiday spirit and 
Kwanzaa is going on around this time. I didn't even realize that Kwanzaa is not a religious holiday. I kind of thought it was because I associate it with Christmas and Hanukkah, which are religious, but it's just a cultural thing that basically the harvest festival. I'm sure you've read folk tales at some point in your life. These would fit in well with them. And so I don't really feel like I have to go super into them. There were some that I liked more than others. Overall, I had a good time listening to this. All the characters are African animals. It was just a fun like hour and a half or so on audio and yeah, I liked it. I gave it like three out of five stars. Next up is The Color of Earth by Kim Dong Hwa. This is another graphic novel. It's the first in a trilogy. It is basically following this young girl. It goes through her becoming of age story. She starts as a child and then goes up into her teens and this takes place in very rural South Korea. I honestly don't know the exact date. I think it's somewhere in the 1800s. It was just kind of a, an exploration of femininity and going through puberty, sexuality. It draws a ton of parallels between nature and sexuality and nature and the human body and I thought that was really interesting. It was very unlike anything I'd ever read before. She lives with her mother who is a single mom and I really liked the relationship between the mother and daughter. It was very open and loving and, and trusting. Just a really interesting look at a culture that is very foreign to me. I feel like I didn't always agree with everything that it said about gender, but I know that this is very much trying to give you a picture of the actual time and place that this book is set and I thought that that was really fascinating. The art is really interesting. It's like photorealistic backgrounds and nature but the characters are more cartoony. It's in black and white which I find interesting because the title has the word color in it and I feel like this these would look so much more beautiful if they had color. Like if they were painted with watercolors I think that would be so cool. I, I read in art but I am pretty sure that the final book is also in black and white. I kind of wish it hadn't been like that, but that's okay. I don't know when or where I will be able to find the other books in this series, but I would like to read them. It's a very quiet and introspective read. I just really appreciated it. I gave this three and a half out of five stars. And then next is Sarah's Key by Tatiana Derone. This follows this woman in 2002 and a girl in 1942. It takes place in Paris and it is about this roundup that happened of Jewish people living in Paris and they were sent to Auschwitz. The girl in 1942 is part of the roundup and then the woman in 2002 is a journalist and she is tracing back and finding out about this girl. They both live in the same apartment. I have some mixed feelings about this book. I definitely feel like it was very readable and fascinating enough. I did like that a huge emphasis was placed on countries not forgetting the bad parts of their history and it's really important to remember things that your country has done that you are not proud of and you have to own up to those things and make sure that it never happens again, that people don't forget those things. So I really did like that about this book, but there were also things that I just thought were kind of weak, like the plot itself I found extremely predictable. I just remember thinking while I was reading it, I was like, there are a couple ways that this plot could go. There's the way that I'm almost positive it will go, and then there's the way that it could go that would make it an interesting and well-written book, and it went the way that I thought it would. So that's that. I also found that as the story went on, the journalist character in 2002 made the horrors of the Holocaust and the victims of the Holocaust so much about herself. I got so irritated with her. She made it seem like she was being so self-sacrificing and so honorable, but I really felt like she was just serving her own whims and wanting to ease her own guilt about certain things, and that didn't really sit right with me. So I gave this three stars. <laughs> so many three-star books. And then another three-star book just to finish it off. 
was Binti by Nnedi Okorafor. This is a short novella. It's science fiction and it's about this girl who is basically the first person in her tribe to ever get accepted to college. Her family doesn't want her to go, but she wants to go to university. So she is starting that journey, but things don't go quite as according to plan. I just have to say that I ne like never read sci-fi, so I did like that this was a short novella that could get me into sci-fi but it was not a big commitment but at the same time i was still reading something that was so far out of my usual range of genres that some things i feel like kind of went over my head and didn't really click with me i don't want to get too spoilery about it so this might not make complete sense but i'll just say that there's a conflict with this species called the meduse the conflict and resolution that happened with them it felt a little bit too simple and and easy for me but the thing that i really did like about this was the writing i liked the character and i was really interested in her home and her culture and she would talk about different customs that she would have on earth i was just really into this world so those were the things that i liked i'm glad that i read it it also has a really really beautiful cover i'm obsessed with that cover oh my goodness yeah i think that's it i'll see you with my holiday booktubeathon wrap up probably i might do like a year in review video but i have not planned that out yet that's it goodbye